This is an older play field. I think we are going to have to do some leveling of the inserts. The inserts uh, are cupped, so we'll probably have to deal with that. All right, now that our first two coats of clear coat have dried, um, we need to do some surface preparation for the final coats. Uh, so what we're going to do is wet sand. Um, you can see the play field is already pretty good, um, but if you run your hand over it, uh, you can feel some spots where uh, a solvent pop has happened. A little air bubble will come out, and it makes a little nib, I call it, in the play field. And you kind of feel that with your finger. Also, there was a heavy planking, uh, you know, vertical lines in the wood in this area of the play field. Um, and I still feel them. Uh, they will go away as we do the final coats of the clear coat. But basically, we want to level the play field and make sure we're level in all areas. This will also tell us any major low spots that we have in the play field because when you wet sand it, uh, when it dries, the surface will be dull. And if there's any low depressions in the play field, they'll still be uh, shiny because the sandpaper didn't hit it. Uh, so you'll be able to see those low spots and uh, we'll deal with some of those low spots after we do this part. So I have my sand and block loaded up with 600 grit wet dry sandpaper. Uh, for this stage of the wet sand, and I always use 600, and it's the only grit that I use is 600 wet dry on a rubber uh, 3M sand and block. And I also have a little tub of water. Uh, this is lukewarm water, and I put a, a dab of dish soap in it. Uh, what the dish soap does is it helps to, a lot of times when you're wet sanding, it'll be real hard to push the uh, sandpaper. Like, it'll actually feel like it's sticking, and uh, that can wreak havoc on your arm all that jab in the dish soap just helps to smooth it out and you get a nice smooth uh, you know uh, sanding with it. Uh, now normally we would not want to introduce water to the wood in the play field. Uh, water gets in the cracks, expands the wood, raises the grain and will pucker the, uh, the silk screen ink, make it flake off easier. Uh, we really don't have to worry about that. We already got two good coats of automotive clear coat on here. The only time uh, where water is not so good is when it wraps around the sides. I try to wipe that up as quick as possible because it, it will embed into the, uh, the planks of the uh, plywood and uh, could cause some problems. So I do try to wipe that off. So to start, we're going to uh, dip your sand and block, dip the sandpaper in the water and get it wet. And then, like I said, this makes a mess. There's really no way around it. I just sand this mainly in one direction. I mainly just go to and from, away from myself. It, it takes, um, for this step, it really depends on how you sprayed. Uh, sometimes, you know, you didn't take a lot of time to set the gun up properly. You know, your surface might be a little uglier and it's going to require more wet sanding. But that's all it is. I mean, basically, even if you got the crummiest spray in the world, um, you'll be able to wet sand it out and then put two smoother coats on on the next two coats and you're still gonna have you know a great looking play field so again that's the other good thing about this auto clear you really can't screw it up and then always have a rag handy uh, I use this to kind of wipe off the edges any water that's kind of spilling over uh, onto the bare wood on the edge of the play fields and stuff unfortunately yes it is gonna get in your holes um, it does cause a problem later because as this dries uh, it's going to leave a white haze on the inside of your holes and stuff. So before you do the second and, and third coats of clear coat, you need to remove that. It's kind of a pain. It's like uh, cleaning grout on tile. It's like you clean all that white haze off, and then you go away and you come back five minutes later, and there's a white haze again, and you got to clean it again. It's it's probably to me it's the most annoying point of this uh, part of this process is getting that white haze out of these holes. I continue wet sanding, and when I come back. Uh, I'll talk about some of the, uh, you know, of what we're going to do with these inserts. And uh, although it does look dull, if you take uh, a little bit of naphtha and you kind of put that on the play field, and you can see how shiny that looks. Um, it's also a good way to put, uh, you got to clean it with naphtha anyway. Uh, sometimes when you put the naphtha on and get the play field shiny again, uh, you'll see the defects a little better um, and you'll know you'll know that you either got to wet sand that area a little more or maybe you want to fill that spot. But what we're going to do next is deal with some of the low spots and probably the best example of that is right here. If you look 
right around this insert you'll see that shiny depression there and also on this one there's some shiny depressions that could cause problems when the ball rolls over it the ball could actually dip down in that and when the ball comes back up it could actually chip or eventually in time wear the clear coat so uh, we're gonna deal with that now and uh, what we're gonna do is fill that so I should show you how to do that in just a second. The thing now is to clean the play field with naphtha and then right before I fill these uh, inserts what I'm gonna, wherever I'm gonna fill I'm gonna clean that one more time with naphtha once I have my uh, rubber gloves on so I don't get any oils from my hand on the play field. Alright I mixed up a little uh, of the DuPont clear coat four parts of solvent one part of activator and I put a couple drops of smoothie in here. What the smoothie is going to do uh, is the smoothie helps it flow a little better and that's what we want on this. We want it to flow and we want it to level out. So the next important part is whatever surface you're working on this play field you need it to be completely level. So you want level both ways. You want to make sure this play field is sitting perfectly level. Uh, so I just kind of shimmed up my box here until the play field got level both ways. To apply it, I'm just using a cheap 50 cent eyedropper that I got at the uh, supermarket. And we're just going to put some clear in that. And we're going to carefully drop this onto the insert that we want to level. You can see I put that clear on there. And it looks a little gloppy. But the good thing is, is it's self leveling itself. You know, as long as your play feels level, it's going to find level. And once that dries, we're just going to sand that down, uh, and it should be perfectly level. So I'm going to finish doing these, and then I'm going to have to let this dry a few hours. And then uh, we'll sand these down, and uh, then we'll be ready to uh, prep this for the final two coats clear.